Hello again. We're going to work on tree number two. I'm taking a small piece of paper towel, folding it into quarters, dipping it in this not entirely clean water, but it it's just a pale green. I think that'll be okay. And um, lightly dragging it along the paper so we can do some more wet into wet painting. This is the more textured side of your paper, which is what I recommend you use first. Um, the back is smoother and it is also suitable for watercolor painting. So I hope that you will enjoy using both sides of the paper. This also has the sun coming from the upper left and we're going for a little more colorful effect in the sky this time. And your small reference is here. So I think I'll um, start in with a pure yellow, making sure that my um, paint in the palette is clean. And making sure that my finger that's anchoring the paper is clean. Having something with a plastic texture behind it underneath your painting as an anchor is nice. It helps it helps to protect whatever table surface you're using. And I don't mind that particular notebook getting a little bit dirty, a little bit of paint on it. I'm just gonna add a smidge of um, water here. And um, for this kind of mauve color, I will take some red and find an empty well to mix. And I'm going to add a smidge of blue. I'm not real concerned about getting, um, contaminating the blue with red. The other way around would be more concerning to me. And you know, whatever color scheme is appealing to you is what you should use. This is one that I thought showed up pretty nicely and gave a bit of the feel of Pacific Northwest. When you have this um, finite edge here that is, you know, very distinct versus this edge here. That means that this is dry and that is wet. Wet flows into wet. So what I'm going to do is rinse my brush so that I just have some clear water and I'm going to come along here and split the difference, which means I have the lower half of the bristles in the this is getting a little, a little too bloomy for me, so I'm just gonna take care of it. I have the lower half of the bristles touching the, the painted area and the upper half in the white space. I'll just use up the rest of that. And I'm gonna get a little more wet. If you saturate the paper a lot to start with, it can take quite a long time to dry. And um, for our purposes, it's probably better to just saturate it a smaller amount and then uh, re-wet as necessary. I wanna get some purple underneath and then I'll go for some more pure blue. So we're doing this in stages. So this can give it a bit of a mountainous effect to have just a, shaping like this. So in this case, I'm going to have this kind of purpley mountain touch the yellow sky. And now I'm going to get blue, but I don't want it to be a straight, straight, solid, um, heavy blue right from the palette. So I'll mix it in just a bit and get a little bit more of a smoky effect. And here, I'm going to avoid this horizon um, from getting too wet, and it can be snow. However, if you want it to be a fall scene, you could add some oranges in. This orange is really strong on your palette, so you may wish to, you know, alter as you see fit and add some other colors in. And I'm going to, I know that there's going to be a couple branches that come this direction and the trunks. I'm going to just preemptively get it a little wet. I don't want the trunk to spread out and be super wide and awkward at the same time though. Okay. All right. 
Um, I think we'll do the background trees first again. So blue with a little green is probably where we're headed because things in the background are smaller, fuzzier, and bluer or cooler in color. So this is really, really spreading a lot. And you do tend to, <laughs> now I started at the bottom, went to the top, it left a big old blob. Let me start at the top and come down. Then you don't get that big old blob. Useful information to know. Try not to get into that snow bank there. Let's try that again. Get a little bit more defined. And it's always good to come back and, you know, get a slightly different color. So we're introducing a smidge of green, having some of these branches come an up, an upside down V towards the bottom. Um, this is a tiny little short tree. Because again, variation is appropriate. Come back and get a little more blue. Overlapping shapes is pleasing to the eye. So these, these trees going off into the distance behind this one is something that the brain sees and is calmed by and it makes sense and it, the brain is satisfied by it. And in art, that's, if you're doing a landscape, often the goal, there I'll start from the top with the swipe coming down so it's more finite. Um, if you're doing experimental art or abstract, sometimes your goal is for people to be a little bit confused and have to look twice at what you're working on. Um, but for a landscape, pretty much people know what a tree looks like or a sky and so on. And so they want it to, to register that way in their brain. In order to see how wet it is up at the top of the tree, I bring my head down and look to the side. And if I can see a sheen, I know it's pretty wet. It looks like there's a little bloom right here at the top. Um, and so I'm gonna just try to dry it a smidge like that. Okay, and then uh, go in with yellow and follow those um, guidelines that we discussed earlier. Broken lines. Wow, unexpected. Um, we want more yellow towards the top. We want more yellow towards the exterior and towards the left, but we always give a little something to the opposite side, um, even if we want to emphasize it more on one side. I think that is just a little much for me, so I will daub that to get it a little drier. Uh, some halo effect is cool, and I think looks really nice in nature, but it, sometimes it kind of gets away from you. And this is the central tree See how I'm alternating kind of, you know, stair steps instead of right, right across from each other. And then occasionally I want to cross the center line because that's how the trees go. Oh, and I'm kind of forgetting to make the branches go straight out to the side in the middle and come down at the bottom. It's time for some more green. Straight green from your palette is a bit rough <laughs> um, and a bit bright. And so we're continuing to use our mixing skills. Looking at a color wheel, if, if you wanna learn more about color, an excellent way of doing that would be to um, just look up online color wheel and it will tell you about the opposites such as green and red are opposite and they'll mix together to make a nice black or gray or brown, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you get too much red and you want to, to neutralize it, you would add green to it, for example. Orange and blue are opposites, yellow and purple are opposites. And I am a, I'm an art nerd, I'm a colored nerd, I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, 
So if you want to get a little bit deeper into it, the color wheel is a, an excellent exploration to know a little bit more what is happening when you're mixing colors on your palette. I think I'm going to get a little brown in here too. So now that I have this deeper color, I don't want to cover up every white space, but I don't want it to look awkward and stand out at the same time. This darker color is going to go more on the right hand side because it's away from the sun. It's going to go more strongly on the bottom and towards the center interior of the tree. Okay, some of these branches kind of come down and interrupt the trunk, stand in the way. That was my finger brush again. So I'm going to do a few, yeah, it's pretty wet up there. Um, a few little sprigs, you know, coming off to the, off the edges that aren't even connected. Oh, dry right there. Um, I think let's add a little more green to come back to um, a more central color. Hmm, what should I do here? I think I should try to do some kind of finite strokes where it's for the green, it comes underneath the yellow and supports it. It doesn't want to cover up the yellow and take away from it. It just wants to um, kind of be there in a supporting role to the yellow. So this would be a circumstance in which you could wait for this to dry before doing more. And again, I really want to make sure it has that cone shape and that it's noticeably wider at the bottom than in the middle. This is just a bit too spotty for me. So I think what I will do is just take a paper towel and kind of drag a couple of these shapes closer so they fill in just a bit. A couple check marks are a super good idea. Gives the appearance of the branches kind of coming towards the viewer. Okay, and then up here, I just want to get a clear, a brush with clear water and unite a few of these so that it looks more in keeping with the rest of the tree that was done on paper that was more wet. Okay, all right. Always nice to come back in and add some yellow that may have gotten diluted earlier in the process. And um, I think it's time for the trunk. So instead of the straight brown, we'll mix it a little bit with the green. Come in, yeah, that's the difference between wet and dry is how finitely you can make these lines stay where you want them. Very finitely here where it's dry in the snow area and not so much at all <laughs> as it gets up into the tree here. See, this is kind of cool. This is a little peekaboo where you can see the, the um, trunk coming through. It's a nice effect that watercolor can give. So um, I'm gonna dry my brush, make sure it doesn't have extra paint on it, get a little bit of yellow and add it there and then just kind of sweep it up and out so that it doesn't uh, pool up so much and split the difference here between the brown and the yellow. I'm gonna get this brush dry again. I, you know, this did dry lighter than it went on, but I think it's dark enough, you know, to, for the sky. So I think the last thing I wanna do is just for this mound, trees have mound like pitchers, like I said, and um, just paint along that pencil line there and then get a shadow color that we've used before and make sure that it has a little green in it since we have these green trees and it should you know reflect what's around it and make sure to get some kind of right underneath it here and um oh man it's so cool to see the the color flow into the water you can just touch it and let it do some blooms like that want to fill out that area so it looks like it has the, you know, similar colors as the rest of the tree. And now that the paper is more dry, 
get a little bit lighter green, a couple more sprigs. Those are, you know, often going to be in an upward direction. Because they're growing up towards the sun, they're new growth. Let's get some darker brown that comes in. Okay, I think that one is pretty, in, in a pretty good spot. Maybe we need a little more dark here. Get a little hair off my brush. We have pets and could be them. Could be me. Um, there. Okay, I think that's pretty pleasing. I want to make sure this has enough color diversity, so maybe I do want a smidge of yellow in there. And just notice these branches are quite a bit lower than these. Okay, so we'll get a kind of a closer to the camera look. Um, I'll set this to the side and I'll bring back in the tree number one. See how it's drying. Um, what we talked about when we left this is coming back in when it's drier to get a little more color in this area that got pretty pale. Um, kind of a couple check mark type of lines and I want some brown kind of trunk. There we go. It's kind of nice to have that um, shadow side be about two thirds or three quarters and the light side be about a quarter or a third and um, really helps you define where the sun is. If you like the way that these end of the brush scratches look, leave them. If they're a little too defined, you just paint over them and they more or less disappear. They just add a slight bit of texture and um, I'm pretty satisfied with this one too. We do need to add the shadow at the bottom. Oh, look what happened up here at the, at the top. Um, kind of spread out, but I like it. If you don't like it, if yours did that, you can just um, take some clear water and brush it on. If you happen to have a magic eraser, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, it's a cleaning product. Those work brilliantly for watercolor. So I'm coming around the side and the sun is coming this way. So the shadow will be diagonally this way. And let's see, this was some shadow color. This was some shadow color. All right, yeah, there we go. That's not distracting and just, just enough to give it the feel that that is in shadow. So we have, I'll try to do both of these, tree number one and tree number two. And I am so pleased that you cared to join me. I am gonna come in one more time with a pretty dry brush and some brown here for that trunk, disperse it a little bit, but it just, you know, there's never a trunk in a spruce or pine kind of tree that's lighter than the rest of the tree. So we wanna pay a little bit of attention to that. And these are just a little too finite for me, so I'm gonna blend them out a bit. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have enjoyed this experience. It has been wonderful for me to share some painting with you. If it brings you some joy or some peace or some relaxation or some fun, then um, mission accomplished. That's, those are some of the things it brings to my life.